Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. My guest today is Vandana Shiva. She is a world famous environmental activist from India. She's a laureate of the Alternative Nobel Prize in 1993. She's author of numerous books. Her latest is called Oneness versus 1%. Thank you very much for being on the phone. My pleasure. I want to begin uh, early on. You were not uh, supposed to be an activist. Uh, you were a physicist, you wanted to work in nuclear energy, and then uh, you came across in the early 1970s what is known in India as the Shipko movement. Can you explain us how you <coughs> came across? Yes, I was training to be in India's nuclear establishment, but then my sister woke me up to the hazards of nuclear. She was a medical doctor. And I went deeper into theoretical physics. I was going to Canada to do a PhD in the foundations of quantum theory. And before I went, I wanted to visit some of my favorite forests in the Himalaya. I've grown up in the Himalayan forest. And this forest I had trekked in was gone. The stream that came from this oak forest was gone. And while returning to Delhi, I talked to a tea shop owner And he talked about how there's a new movement called Chipko. So in my heart, I said, I'm going to come back every vacation and be a volunteer for this movement. Women came out to say, we're going to hug the trees. You cannot cut the trees because from the trees come our water. The trees stabilize the mountain and prevent landslides. The trees prevent floods and droughts. And they also give us everything we need. We will be huggers of trees. The name Chipko means to hug. And I learned all my lessons of ecological activism from the women of the Himalaya who had never been to school but knew everything about ecology, knew everything about biodiversity. What they called soil, water, and pure air today talked about as ecological functions of the forests, that forests are not timber mines. And a lot of my change in the understanding of the fact that nature is the basis of economy came from my engagement with Chipko. My respect for women's knowledge, indigenous knowledge, came from my engagement with Chipko. And it totally turned my own head upside down because physics, you know, high in the world, you know something others don't. And you re I realized everyone has knowledge and right. you must respect it. So uh, you've uh, became really engaged in this. Uh, you've been an opponent of uh, big multinational corporations, especially... Uh, Monsanto, uh, to name just uh, one, uh, because of what you describe as their nefarious influence on uh, agriculture. Uh, there are a number of examples. There was the BT cotton uh, in, in India, uh, especially. Uh, and you said, you know, uh, this is not a matter of helping farmers grow their land, but actually making them dependent on those big corporations. Um, you know, the entry of corporations into agriculture It's so wrong because the corporations only bring poisons. Most of them have roots in Hitler's Germany, in making gases to kill people in concentration But that's camps. What, that was not their aim. Their aim no. was to give people enough. No, no, no. The aim was to make chemicals that kill people. After the wars, they said, why should we stop making these chemicals? Let's say now they'll kill pests. They will give fer fertilizer. Fertilizers were made in the same factories that made explosives and ammunition for Hitler's That's Germany. It's not the same goal. No, the, the, or the companies are the same and the processes are the same. So your rhetoric might change, but the goal does not. The materiality of a death-making chemical doesn't change when you say it's now for feeding the world. I did a book on the violence of the Green Revolution because Punjab, the most fertile land of India, was destroyed. And then when Monsanto came in as a result of globalization, because till uh, the 90s, 90% of the seed was in farmers' hands, and the rest came from the public sector, from the government labs, the research institutions. So Monsanto came illegally, didn't take any approval, with the promise that they would increase farmers' incomes and have this magical technology to control pests. Well, the bollworm is now resistant. Farmers are in debt. Farmers are committing suicide. The area has been ruined. The pollinators are gone. There's no pollen. The groundwater's gone. So there's nothing about the ecosystem. So I save seeds. We brought organic cotton seeds back. We work with the Gandhi ashrams on hand spinning and hand weaving of this organic cotton. The economy in the villages where we work has jumped tenfold because now the wealth is staying 
in the village rather than being siphoned off as Monsanto's profit. And I read a new study that says because we've saved seeds, we brought local seeds that can be saved back into the economy. Monsanto has lost 11 million. I, I want to get to your latest book because uh, you widen, I would say, uh, your attacks is not only Monsanto and, and the likes, but also uh, others. Uh, you uh, attack the what you describe as the billionaire uh, dictators, especially uh, one man, I should say, uh, Bill Gates, uh, who uh, you describe as the Christopher Columbus, I'm uh, quoting you, of modern times, and that's not a compliment, obviously, uh, whose mission is to impose, quote-unquote, genetically modified organisms and digital dictatorship to small farmers across the world. Bill Gates, who's donated billions uh, to improve public health in poor countries and so on, you're saying, essentially, he's a dictator, And he's there not to help, but to make people poorer, more dependent. Well, Bill Gates is actually continuing the work of Monsanto uh, because Monsanto had so many movements. And we held a, a tribunal on Monsanto. Um, a buyer bought up Monsanto. But when Bill Gates pours money into Africa for feeding the poor in Africa and preventing famine, what's he doing? He's pushing the failed green revolution. He's pushing chemicals, pushing GMOs, pushing patents. And now pushing new... Knowingly, or he thinks it's a good thing and he may be wrong. Well, there's it's enough, not the same thing. There's enough evidence of what it does. There are enough letters to him from farmers of Africa, from governments of Africa to say, this is not the way to go. The United Nations accepts agroecology working with ecological systems as the best way to go. Now, you, um, Bill Gates is trying very hard to shift the patenting issue now to digital. So you just take a genomic map and you say, my invention, you don't create a seed. Seed is self-organized, self-making, and evolution in continuity. Just by re making a map, a genome, and you have no idea what the seed does. And he, this is something he's pushing very, very hard. My book records how he financed DivSeek. Um, I've talked about how he's pirated. Seeds we have saved that tolerate salt and floods, and he says invention. This biopiracy is a bit like Columbus, where Columbus is supposed to have discovered America. When he basically went as a pirate. Why do I call him today's Columbus? Because he's carving out new colonies. Software should have stayed open software. So, so he said, you say he has a, a strategy, a nefarious uh, strategy, which 